Kia 12 and 13. Here is the second part of question 2 of the 2015 paper. So there's a merit question here and an excellence question. Alright, the first one is to write this complex number in the form A plus B I. So if you look at it, um, you see I to the power of 7 in there. And remember that we're going to work with the fact that I squared is equal to negative 1, which means that I to the power of 4 is equal to negative 1 squared, which is just 1. Alright, so I'm going to do that quite slowly in here in case you haven't done that before. In my class, which is just a little bit. So here we've got, picked up a pen again, um, 4i to the 7 minus i over 1 plus 2i squared. So we'll clean up that top line before we do anything else. So doing this in baby steps, 4i to the power of 7 is the same as 4i to the power of 3. So we can take out powers of 4 because they just equal 1. So it's 4i cubed minus i over 1 plus 2i squared. Right Now you don't have to put that step in, um, but we can see that 4i cubed is equal to 4i squared times i. We know that this is equal to negative 1. So this thing here is really just negative 4i minus i. So we've simplified that quite a long way already. So I'll pop in a new slide and we'll go from there. So my numerator is now negative 4i take away i is just negative 5i squared. And the denominator is 1 plus 2i squared. So up the top we've got 25i squared over 1 plus 4i plus 4i squared. Now I'm writing out every single line here so that if you're watching and you're still finding these quite hard you can see. But for some of you you'll be able to do the expanding more quickly. So we've got negative 25 over 1 plus 4i minus 4. So that's negative 25 over negative 3 plus 4i. Now I want to multiply by 1 So I'm multiplying by my conjugate so that I get rid of any complex um, imaginary parts in the denominator. So that's my conjugate, so times top and bottom by that. And here's what I get up here. Well, denominator first, I get 9. That gives me minus 12i. That gives me plus 12i, which of course is the whole reason that we multiply by the conjugate, so that that happens. Right, I get 9 plus 16 here. Up the top I get 75. Right, so this times this, 75 plus 100i. Which gives me 75 on 25 plus 100i on 25. Or 3 plus 4i. So that's it. Now I know I did that in a gazillion steps, but a lot of them were not necessary once you've done enough practice. Right, the big thing is not to freak out when you see i to the power of 7 or i to the power of 22 or anything like that. We just use um, i to the power of 4 and i squared to help me simplify higher order powers of i. Okay, so that's a merit question there. Now I'm going to go on to the excellence one, which is a locus problem. So find the Cartesian equation of the locus described by arg z minus 2 over z plus pi equals pi on 4. So what on earth are we talking about? Well, Cartesian equation means write it with x's and y's. Okay, And locus is often going to end up giving us um, a set of points that might form a shape like an ellipse or a circle or maybe something simpler. A key bit of information here is that we're looking for some complex number z and we'll write it as x plus i y, because that's all we know about it. And when we take that z, take off 2, and divide it by z plus 5, we're looking for all those points where that quotient will lie on this line here, right, where the angle is pi on 4. Okay, so we're thinking about this is the real axis, and this is the imaginary axis. So we're going to... 
um, work with this now by substituting this thing in here. So I'll do that on a new page because we're going to need a little bit of room for some algebra. Okay, so let z equal x plus iy. And we're looking for z minus 2 over z plus 5. So substitute in x plus iy minus 2 over x plus iy plus 5. Now make sure you check back the question at this point to see that you've got those pluses and minuses right before we do a whole lot of work. I'm going to reorder those to get the real part first and then the complex part. See, I've made a mistake already. That should be x minus 2. All right, x minus 2 plus iy, x plus 5 plus iy. You might like to put brackets around there just to make it a bit clearer. Right, now when I'm working with complex numbers, I never like having anything imaginary in the bottom line, so I multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate here is x plus 5 minus iy. Now you see, if you hadn't reordered that, the chances that you muck up the conjugate are pretty high. Well, at least they are for me. So I'm going to times numerator and denominator by the same thing. Right, let's work this out. Now we're still not really sure where we're going here, but we're just doing some good expanding, and then we'll go back to the problem. So the denominator will now be x plus 5 squared, right, plus iy times that, minus iy times that. So that, as usual, that's going to go. Right, we'll just get rid of that so I have some space. Okay, but plus iy times minus iy gives me plus y squared, right? So remember I'm always getting this pattern when I multiply by the conjugate that I'll end up with a plus y squared because y squared of course is equal to negative 1. Right, but if you're watching this ex excellence question I'm hoping you know that by now. Now let's expand out the top line. We could pop some brackets in here. So we'll go x minus 2 times x plus 5 Right, let's do all of the real bit first. We'll get plus y squared here. Right, plus x plus 5 yi. So that's those two done. Minus x minus 2 yi. So obviously we need to clean that up a bit. I'll move back over here, even though I don't like putting my equal signs out of line. Um, let's expand, well, we can expand the bottom line, so we might as well do that. x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now, it turns out we actually don't need to worry about this, but we'll do it anyway. And we're going to expand the top line. So what I'm thinking here is that I'm, I want to get an expression where I can look at the complex number with a real part and an imaginary part. So up here we're going to have x squared plus... 3x minus 10 plus y squared. So that's that bit. Now let's see what's going to happen here. I'm going to have plus xyi plus 5yi minus xyi plus 2yi. So there's a little bit of simplifying that I can do with this bit. I'll do that on a new slide. So what I've got for this z minus 2 over z plus 5 is I've got x cubed plus 3x minus 10 plus y squared plus, now that next bit is going to simplify to give me just plus 7yi, and it's all over that denominator, which is x squared plus 10x plus 25 plus y squared. Now let's just write that in two separate bits. So my real bit here is that. Okay, so we're looking at this, and what we've done here is we've said when we've got z minus 2 over z plus 5, for any complex number, if we do that, take 2 off and divide it by the number 
plus 5, we get this. But we're looking for just those values where when I draw that, I have the angle be pi on 4. But we know this is pretty special. Pi on 4 is 45 degrees. So in the Argan diagram, to have something fall on a 45 degree line, that means that my real and my complex, sorry, my real and my imaginary parts of my complex number must be the same. For example, 2 plus 2i would fall on the 45 degree line. So what does that let me do? Well, it means I can say the locus of points that satisfy that equation are where the real part and the imaginary part are the same. So because I've got the same denominator, I don't even have to worry about it. right? I can just multiply top and bottom through by that, and then I'm left with solving when is this equal to this. So that's the very last step. So here we've got x squared plus 3x minus 10 plus y squared is equal to 7y. So let's just rearrange that, and we get x squared plus 3x minus 10 plus y squared minus 7y equals 0. Now that's all you needed to do for excellence. Uh, but one thing that you might like to do, since you've got that far and you've done all that thinking, is to think, well, what shape is that? So um, if you haven't done conics, uh, this won't make that much sense. But if you have, we know that what we're going to do is we'll do completing the square on these. Okay, so this is beyond what you need to do for excellence, but kind of cool. So we go x plus 1.5 squared, take out the 2.25 that we've added in, plus y minus 3.5 squared, take out the 12.25 that we've added in, and take out our 10 that was here before. So we've got x plus 1.5 squared plus y minus 3.5 squared is equal to 24.5, I think. So we can divide both sides through by that. I'm going to do that very messily. I hope there's no other maths teachers watching. Um, and what do I see there? Well, what have I got? I've got the equation of a circle. Okay. Um, and I've got a circle, but it's not centered on zero. It's a circle centered on negative 1.5 and positive 3.5. And the radius is going to be just under the square root of that, which is under the square root of 5. So it's basically it's saying that if I take a complex number that lies on that circle, and then I take 2 off, I add 5 on, and divide 1 by the other, then it turns out that that quotient is going to lie, going to give me a complex number that lies on this line here, with an arg of pi on 4. Okay, so that's quite quite a challenging problem if you don't take a step back and think about what an angle of pi on 4 really means. But if you spot that, it's not so terrible. It's just a wee bit of algebra to get there. And the general method that we used for this locus problem of going that z equals x plus iy is usually a good place to start for these problems. Okay, thank you for watching, and please let me know if there were any problems.